In this lesson, I'll show you three examples on how to find the gradient of a function in 3D. To find the gradient of a function in 3D, we first have to find the gradient of the function evaluated at the point that they give us, and then we multiply by the unit vector, which can be found using this formula, where you have your vector and you divide it by its magnitude. And the magnitude can be found using a variant of the Pythagorean theorem. Now we have the orders questions one through three, and that's shown on your screen, except we'll start with a simple one, and the simple one is in question two. Here we're asked to find the gradient of our function f evaluated at the point zero, zero, and pi over six. The reason why this is easier than questions one and three is because they don't give us a vector here. They just want us to evaluate the gradient function at this point. So let's go ahead and do that. Our function is f is equal to e to the power of x plus y cosine z plus y plus one in parentheses times the reciprocal of the sine function x. Starting with the partial derivative of f with respect to x, we have, let's start over here, cosine z is a constant since we're starting with x. Here we have e to the power of x plus y, now we take the derivative of x plus y, that should be equal to one, y becomes zero, and we also have cosine z as a factor. Moving on to this term, y plus one is a factor, and it's a constant, and the reciprocal of sine x is equal to, and you should know this, it's one over the square root of one minus x squared. We'll have to evaluate this at zero, zero, and pi over six. Now we find the partial derivative with respect to y. Once again, e to the power of x plus y times x plus over here, the reciprocal sine function stays the way it is. And over here, you should end up with simply one. Lastly, f sub z, starting over here, we end up with, that is considered a constant, e to the power of x plus y, and the derivative of cosine z should be negative sine z. This all becomes zero. So our gradient function, the gradient of f at x, y, and z is equal to the vector of these three functions, partial derivatives, evaluated at zero, zero, and pi over six. And if you evaluate these correctly at zero, zero, and pi over six, you should end up with the following. And you can confirm all three of these using your calculator. Simply substitute where you see x, y, and z with these numbers, and this is what you should end up with. Now let's move on to something more tricky. Question number one, this time we have the function and they want us to find d sub u, which is the directional derivative of the function or the gradient of f at this point in the direction of the vector five, negative one, and two. So let's start by finding the unit vector for this vector. We call this vector v, and right now it's five, negative one, and two. To find the unit vector, we need the magnitude, and the magnitude is found by squaring all of these numbers and then square rooting their sums. So all of this should give us the magnitude of our vector v. We have 25 plus one plus two to the power of two, we should have a square there, we end up with 30. So the square root of 30. We'll divide each of these by the square root of 30 now our unit vector, u hat, is equal to five over the square root of 30, negative one over the square root of 30, and two over the square root of 30. All we have to do now is find the partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z. Starting with x, this becomes y to the power of three, that becomes z, and the rest is zero. f sub y, that becomes three y squared, x, zero, and negative one, f sub z. This becomes zero, that becomes x, and that becomes zero. Evaluating this at zero, negative one, and one, you should end up with zero. Evaluating this at zero, negative one, and one, that becomes a zero. 
we have negative one, and that simply becomes zero. So zero, negative one, and zero. Now, according to this formula, we will multiply the vectors zero, negative one, and zero with u hat, our unit vector. In doing this, your final answer should be zero times that is zero, negative one times this is one over the square root of 30. Notice that it's positive now. And that right there is the answer. Of course, this has a meaning. And the way you interpret it is the amount our function f changes when we are at the point 0, negative 1, and 1, and moving in the direction of the vector that they specified. Now, if you'd like to see the answer to question number 3, make sure you watch part 2 of this series. Hope to see you soon.